but love builds up. If anyone supposes he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. But if one loves God, one is known by him. So about the eating of meat sacrificed to idols, we know that there is no idol in the world, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there are so-called gods in heaven and on earth, there are, to be sure, many gods and many lords. Yet for us, there is one God, the Father, from whom all things are and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things are and through whom we exist. But not all have this knowledge. There are some of you who have been so used to idolatry up until now that when they eat meat sacrificed to idols, their conscience, which is weak, is defiled. Thus, through your knowledge, the weak person is brought to destruction, the brother for whom Christ died. When you sin in this way against your brothers and wound their consciences, weak as they are, you are sinning against Christ. Therefore, if food causes my brother to sin, I will never eat meat again, so that I may not cause my brother to sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. O oh Lord, you have probed me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. My journeys and my rest you scrutinize. With all my ways you are familiar. Truly, you have formed my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I give you thanks that I am fearfully, wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. Probe me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if my way is crooked and lead me in the way of old. Dominus vobiscum, et cum spiritus Lexio sancti evangelii secundum lucam, gloria ti domine. Jesus said to his disciples, To you who hear, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. To the person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other one as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you and from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Do to others 
as you would have them do to you. For if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend money to those for whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and get back the same amount. But rather, love your enemies and do good to them and lend expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High. For he himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as also your Father is merciful. Stop judging, and you will not be judged. Stop condemning, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and gifts will be given to you. A good measure packed together, shaken down and overflowing, will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will in return be measured out to you. Verbum Domini You know, one thing that's always very helpful is to have a to-do list. I mean, this is great when you have, say, several responsibilities throughout the day, or if you're working on a project and you want to check off things that, that you need to accomplish. You know, it's, it's a wonderful thing to have a to-do list. And Jesus today gives us a list of things we need to do. And it is a very list, very difficult list to accomplish because it involves loving and being merciful, but not to those who, who we like the most, those who we're most familiar with, but those who are the most difficult to love, those who do wrong to us, who hurt us, and those who we may call enemies. But of course, you know, with Jesus, we can do all things. So don't let this overwhelm you. Well, Jesus, at this point in the gospel. He is on, he's on, he's on, he's on the mount. This is the Sermon on the Mount here. He's just given the Beatitudes and the woes. And now he's giving us these commands. And so there were several people there listening. And he's saying to love your enemies. Now imagine the, the people there hearing this. You know, these were, well, many of them Israelites, you know, uh, or, and, and them, you know, taking this in. And we got to also recall that, that the Romans had occupied all of Israel. And so the, that uh, many of the Jews hated the Romans because they were under their control. And, and in, in many circumstances, the Romans were mean to them. And now Jesus is, is saying to love your enemies. Now, of course, uh, the Romans, uh, you, know, uh, you know, they often, uh, you know, they, they were working with the tax collectors, charging them uh, large fees. You know, they'd arrest them. You know, they'd, they'd beat them. They'd curse them. Very cruel people. And, and just that the fact that they had taken over their land. 
So they were heated. And Jesus says, oh, well, hey, bless those who persecute you, those who curse you. No, forgive, he's telling us, and you will be forgiven. That, that's, that's a very difficult thing to, to take in and to accept. And then, you know, it, it gets a little, little deeper here. You know, it's telling them to, if, if one strikes you, if, if, you know, to turn the other cheek. One hits you on one cheek, turn the other one. These are difficult things here. You know, and I'm not saying that I'm there yet, you know, <laughs> especially this turn the cheek one, that, that gets a little hard. Okay, and then, you know, uh, Jesus, he's telling us, do unto others as you want done to you. So now, now think about that. Okay, and when he goes to the, the, like the, the, the second part of this, He's saying, you know, um, be merciful just as your father is merciful. Do not judge. Do not condemn. Forgive as you are forgiving. You know, these are things that, of course, you, you know, we, we would, if, if we want, do unto others as you want done to, to them. You know, we all make mistakes. We all, you know, uh, perhaps, uh, you know, have hurt people. And we all would like to be forgiven as well. You know, we, we, don't, we don't like to be judged. We don't like to be condemned. You know, so Jesus is saying to do unto others as you want done to you. Well, it, it would appear as like something like uh, far beyond us, something like, you know, almost impossible to do. But as I said earlier, you know, everything is possible with God. And the thing that, that happens to us is when we hear the, all of these commands of the Lord, we just want to give it up. It says, oh, that's just too hard. I can't do it. Well, how do you know you can't do it if you haven't tried? See, that's how it starts is that we come to the Lord and we ask God. He says, God, I can't do this on my own. I need your help. Give me the grace. Give me the strength to love those who are difficult to love. You know, help me o overcome these difficulties. Heal me so that I can love as you've called me to love. See, that's how we have to go to the Lord. Not just saying that, oh, this is, this is just too hard. No, go to him, say, help me do this. And see, as we're, as, as, when we do that, we're already taking the steps necessary to do this, we, we're already working on it now. We're already on that ladder of, of loving our enemies and forgiving those who are hard to forgive. We're going somewhere now. Remember, the, the, the Christian life, becoming more Christ-like, it, it is a process. And, and sometimes there, there, we gotta take little steps. You know, it's like climbing a ladder. You, you start at the bottom rung and you go up. I mean, nobody like just jumps up there. You know, to, or leaps up, you know, to the, to the top. You, you, you get one rung at a time. Same thing here. See, and another thing that is, that is necessary is, yeah, we got we to take it to the Lord, give it to Him, but we have to spend time with the Lord, with Jesus. Quiet time with Him. Allowing Him to minister to us. This is why Eucharistic uh, adoration is so powerful because the Lord is right there looking at us and his, his love is being poured out. You know, he's looking at us, we look at him. He's right in front of us. And this, this is a chance to, to really unite ourselves with him. And he can do so much with, within our soul. There could be such a strong connection there. Many times we just have to be there and watch him. And something's happening here. We have to believe that. So, so like, it's just like, you know, sometimes, you know, when people who, who do acting out there, and, you know, many times they need to study the, the character of the, the, of the person they're playing. So then, you know, they, they will look at them. They'll watch them 
or like if the person is still alive, it's a true story, whatever, they'll go follow them around so that they learn their ways. See, it's the same with the Lord. Spending quiet time, Eucharistic adoration, just being with him, letting him work. And then, you know, I know there are some of us out there who, who have a hard time staying still. That's okay. You know, we, we all got things to work on. We all have weaknesses. And if, if that's something you're, you're dealing with, something you're working on, just being still with the Lord in quiet time, well, take out the Bible. Take out the, the gospel and, and read. Read the life of Jesus. Read his words. Take it in. Read it over and over and over again. You can never get enough. No, there's always more. There's always more to be revealed. So we, so we keep reading and taking it, and you start with one gospel, especially the gospel of John, because it's, there's so much, so, much, uh, so much love is expressed in that, in that gospel passage. The gospel of Luke, we see, we see much mercy here. And, and so, so that's why it's important to, to read it. And as we read it, we meditate on it, the life of Jesus. And as we're meditating, we're reading it, we're having quiet time, we got to make it our own. So here it is. See, and, and the more we can be with the Lord and study his ways, we'll be like him. That, that's how it works. And so, uh, my brothers and sisters, you know, it, it's not, you see, it, it may sound hard, but what, what, the way I've just explained it, is coming to Jesus. Jesus understands you. He knows you've been hurt. He knows you've been wounded, and he wants to heal you, but we have to let him, and we have to want to have the will and the desire to be like him and to live this way. Okay, and once we do that, then, then we can start seeing some really good things to put, really good things happening. Now put, okay, be willing to put the stubbornness aside. We're willing to take on the forgiveness. It can happen. And, and then there is such freedom. Because in, in this, in, in we, we become so, so, so much more united to the Lord. So much more like him. It's a beautiful life. And then that's the way of, this, of sainthood here. That's the way we've been called to here. And so, brothers and sisters, Jesus loves us very much. Come to that love. Rest in that love. And be with him so that we can be more like him, so we can follow these commandments, always, always showing charity, always showing mercy to the ones who are most difficult to love. God bless you all.